Welcome back to Sekoshta Self-Defense. As you can see, stretching out before I start the session, just the major muscle groups on stretches. Today we're going to talk about blocks. Every block is also a punch, which may seem a bit confusing. Every block is a strike. Every punch can be a block as well. The basic blocks that we will learn will help you defend yourself when somebody's punching. As I stated before, anything you do at least 500 times will go into your muscle memory. And so practice makes perfect. Uh, in a sense it does. Actually, perfect, practicing perfectly will make you perfect. Because a lot of people, if you practice things the wrong way, it, your muscle memory will retain something you shouldn't. So as we learn about the different blocks, everything will come from the ready stance that we talked about where your feet line up and your hands are six to eight inches out from your chest and your front hand, you want to be able to see over the top of it. We talked about the ball alignment. You're never going to punch with the small two fingers, always with the big ones. Same thing with blocks. Now, there's different blocks. There's the inward blocks that come in towards you and the outward blocks that go away, rising. And all of these blocks, you don't want to stop the punch or the kicks that are coming at you. You want to redirect them. That way you're not coming in direct conflict and trying to just stop it. The time that you would do that would be if you're in a corner, there's brick walls on both sides, something's coming down on you, you're just going to have to stop it with your arm putting up and you might break your arm if someone's hitting with you a bat or something. Even then I'd still try and deflect it off to the side. So as we talk about the blocks, this hand in the front is going to make a small circle for the inward block. Now this back hand can also do the inward block, the small circle. And if a punch or strike comes at me, the back hand can do an outward circle. It's an outward block, outward block. Many times in martial arts you'll see the hard blocks and they come from here. We don't do that. We come from the ready stance position so that your muscle memory will always come back to ready and be ready to block. Many of your different styles will be soft and they'll just go like this. We don't, we don't do that. We do small circles, it's a small deflection, and in the women's self-defense program, keep your fingers close in. Do not tuck your thumbs under. If you have long nails, that can be an issue because you can hurt yourself when they come together. So you would have to flatten them out a bit, but you're still striking with those two fingers. So your inward block, your outward block, it's got a small circle on it. Your rising block, you can note that the rising is not directly over your head, it's slightly angled. So you're deflecting the punches. And normally I'm not going to stay in my position when I'm blocking. I'm going to try and slide to the side a little bit. As the punch comes in, I'll try and slide to the side. Your block is just going to deflect the punch. So you've got down and out blocks, which is essentially the same thing as the rising, where you're coming down to block a kick, and there's a little circle on your block. Same thing you come here. There's a push block where you open your hand. And this is where you have to be extremely careful not to break your fingers. But you pull your fingers back out of the way, and you would push down. Because striking with your hand, you could do it. It's best, your best block is no block at all. You want to move. You want to just move out of the way, move back. That's your best block is to move. Remember that when someone says, well, what's the best block? It's to move. Remember I said every block is a strike? The same thing. If someone throws a punch, I can move in. And I'm blocking, but I'm striking as well at the same time. Thank you for coming to the Sekoshita block section. Welcome to Sekoshita. Right now we'll be going into some blocks and some strikes when we do them together. And I have Carol Haygood with me. She's going to help us. And understand that Carol has not taken any martial arts. So she's new to this. That will be showing you some things that she doesn't know yet. And as we go into this, you'll be able to see she has her left shoulder injured. So with your limitations, you'll be able to say, okay, I can do this, I can't do that. So you'll be able to use your strengths. Carol, appreciate her coming to help. As we discussed, you're going to put one foot forward and you're going to line your back heel up. You turn this a little bit here with this foot right here. 
Now, you don't want to have your knee facing them, but you want to put an angle a little bit so that if somebody does hit you, you can collapse it. Because if it's forward, they can break it. Your line will go from your heel to your front toe for the person, but your knee's slightly bent. It's a little bit uncomfortable at first. Your front hand, you want to be able to see over the top and see how she has her thumb sticking up. That would come here, not tucked under. And then this would be lined up straight, like we discussed. Those are the two fingers she would punch with. And she'd have the other hand up, although this is her injured side. She can still block with it, but she can't lift it any higher, any higher than about that. Right? Okay, so if I came with a punch here, you do it now. We're very good. You, you, you just listen to me say it once. That's got the small circle on it. Now, as I discussed, never do under three things. So she would do an outward and then punch me. Outward and then punch. And then she can do other things. There's elbows. She can come down with a hammer fist. So there's lots of things. If I come in with a punch here, no. good. That's fine. Yeah. You can block it with either one here. Or if this is coming and this is busy, you could use that one. So, no. No, that's fine. Oh. You can come in, you've got your small circle, and then punch. Now, if they're punching like this, you just do your very best. So, you know, now if someone comes from down here, down and out, very good. Here, you've got your circle, that's an outward punch. Here, and then she can come straight at you right there. And then when this comes as a back fist, she's going to hit with these two fingers, the top big fingers, not with the small ones. They come out. You can go for the nose. A lot of people talk about punching the throat. Excellent place to hit someone in the throat, takes them out. I have glasses on. And so if she wants to, she can just open her hand up and rake my glasses right off my face and they would fall down and then poke me in the eye. That's one of the best things. The pokes that I teach for basics, you do use your thumbs. You would cuff your hands with your nails laying flat and your thumb slightly sticks out and then, you, so I break the glasses off and then you would hit eight or nine times like this. Of course, if someone started to try to pull my glasses off, I'd be going for the glasses. Go for the glasses. So you, that would stop you from hitting me. Because it would be a natural reaction. A natural reaction. Yeah. But, but I go so fast that I just break the glasses off and go into the eyes. Oh. So if you can get those glasses off and then poke into the eyes, you, you never want to have your fingers straight. You want to have them slightly bent and close together if you're going to poke with the fingers. And the same thing, if you're going to punch in the throat, use those two fingers like a top. Some people say go like this. Well, if you're not trained, your hand doesn't work properly when you do this. And so just punch them with those two fingers again in the throat. Here, here Boom, this way or sideways? You can do it straight up and down or this way, which are more comfortable for you, where you feel the strength, especially since you have the shoulder injury. So with the thumb jab, I go like this. And so if you're in a car or something and you, you have to do that, or if you're outside and you get the glasses off, just you go because you do it eight or nine times and it's going to hit one of their eyes and so that will decapacitate them quickly so with your blocks in out and and you see you you don't have to be really hard all you want to move yes and if you can move quickly you can move to the oh. side so if you're punching me if you're punching me you can move to the side there's lots and we can get into that but moving, just getting out of the way, weaving, bobbing, weaving up and down will help you defend yourself because the best block isn't a block at all. Thank you. Welcome to Say Kosh to Self Defense for Women. What I'd like to mention are a couple of things. Obviously, you should avoid dark areas, you should avoid being alone. Uh, and if you do get in a situation where you need to fight, hopefully there will be other people there. You can yell, you can scream. Learning some of these techniques is not a substitute uh, and for real classes. So I would urge you to get, get to your nearest dojo and sign up. You, can, you don't have to become a martial arts expert, but there are several classes that can teach you self-defense moves. We've talked about some of the strikes. We've talk, talked about some of the basic kicks and stances, how to hold, how to come back to this position, never dropping it when you're kicking. We've talked about uh, a bone alignment. We've talked about the the knees and the elbows, and every block is a strike, and every strike is a block. You can also block with your kicks. So, so someone's got their hands up, I can kick that down, and then come around and kick them. 
like I said, we've only gone, gone over some of the basics, but as the women take power and say, oh, I can hit that. I can do this. Play the what I've gained. I, environmental fighting. Oh, I have a can of hairspray. Or I look at that. There's a chair you can pick it up. When you do some of these things, if you had a bat or something, you know, when you swing like this, you're losing control. Something like this is much more effective when you jab it because you've got both hands on it, you've got control of it, you can jab it, and it's harder for them to grab it if you're jabbing and pulling back than if you're swinging, you can lose control on it. Uh, swinging, if you connect, you can really hurt them, but jabbing, just go forward and jab. So the other portions are, for example, you can take a chair. You want to get control of that chair instead of just swinging it at them. Same thing, you're going to be jabbing and going in circles. Circles are going to be great things like we talked about in the blocks. Circles, jab, get control of it. Circles, jab. Jabbing is going to, when I talk about environmental fighting, using a lamp, using anything like that that you have at your disposal, a chair, a pen, you want to back it up with your hand and poke and jab. And I would go for the eyes, the throat, the groin. Like I said, I'm not advocating violence, but only in defense. Only, never escalate if you don't need to. So you would never punch someone if they pushed you. You would never you know, break someone's arm if they hit you. You don't need to escalate violence. In fact, it's much better if you can talk your way out of the situation. I used to work as, in a bar as a bouncer. And mostly, we would talk our way out of situations. And then when the talking didn't work, we did some of the holes that we discussed. And there's other holes that we can go into. Thank you for coming to say Kosh to self defense. Look okay? I think so. We, I'll uh, look at the video when I get home. Welcome to Sekoshta Self-Defense. This section will be on kata. Kata is like a memorized dance. It does help you practice, and it's interesting as you go about these. Bruce Lee would say, empty your mind of all these teachings that you've learned. He went and took wrestling, boxing, and different karate martial arts, and then he combined a lot of them together. Uh, Sekoshta simply means successful, so whatever it may be successful. Um, many of the kata will start out from a basic position, and then they'll, they'll come in, and this is just to practice. So we would start here, and you, know, you come and bow, and then as you start, I see I can do an inward block, an inward block, an outward block, an outward block, a rising to the side, a rising to the side, down and out, down and out, back to the middle, and then as we go to the next kata, we do an inward and a punch, come back to your position, Inward, punch, back to your position. Outward block, punch, back to your position. Outward block, punch, back to your position. Rising block, punch, back to your position. Rising block, punch, back to your position. Down and out block, punch, back to your position. Down and out block, punch, back to your position. Back to center, done. You can add a kick to, the, to these where you come in. Inward block. Punch, forward front snap, okay? Inward block, punch, forward front snap. Outward block, punch, forward front snap. You can do this and go from kick to kick and add. That will help you combine your kicks and your punches. You can do a rear kick, front kicks. But the point of it is, as you look at my legs, you'll see the alignment from heel to toe to the person you're fighting. My, both of my hands are up. So when I do the block, they both hands stay up. When I do the kick, both hands stay up. When I do the back kick, your front hand is gonna change position to become the back hand. It will center over the chest. As I come up here, my front hand, back hand, it becomes my front hand. It's out far enough so if somebody hits it, it's not gonna pop me in the face. I can see over the top of it. This one is centered here. So as you do the kata, remember those things. You want to stay in position. This is your ready position where everything should be done from. When you're practicing your blocks, your punches, and your kicks, everything comes from this ready position. Front snap, roundhouse, side thrust, outward blocks, rising blocks, down and out.
and were blocked. Same thing, you've got each one of the blocks on your front hand and on your back hand. As you stand, remember, slightly bent, legs slightly bent. Never want to face your opponent like this. You always want to put one side of your body. Don't line both feet up like that. Don't stand like that. Look at your bottom heel lines to the front toe. 